Hello world and welcome to another episode of Launch Map. In today's episode we are going to talk about the new flavor on API Gateway called HTTP APIs. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started! <laughs> So this is the seventh episode on Launchmas. I am still recording in Vegas. This is the last video you will see from Vegas. And the next ones are coming fresh <laughs> from Finland. Um, I wanted to make this video as soon as I can because I think this is a really cool launch that was announced during reInvent. That is the addition of a new flavor in H uh, API Gateway called HTTP APIs. So, we have been using API Gateway since forever for making our serverless applications and as serverless developers we love that service, but we have some conflicts with usually with the pricing or with the performance. So to solve that problem, because it's important to listen to the customers, that's the core premise of AWS, they have created this new flavor that is a lightweight version of the REST APIs that we are familiar with. So, with the new flavor of HTTP APIs, uh, it's promised to reduce the cost to 70% and it reduced the overhead latency of 50%. So that's quite crazy achievements with these new APIs. Basically, it's a new feature that will come uh, in phases. So the first launch was uh, last week during reInvent. And during the course of the month, they are keep on adding features to make uh, the whole um, flavor almost parity with the REST endpoints. So for now, we can find all the basic functionalities that we are familiar with uh, HTTP gateway that we use in our serverless workloads. You can find the stages. You can find uh, some kind of authorizers. For now, there is the JW. JWT, I'm horrible at spelling, uh, token support, but later on they will add more different authorizers as well. Um, then there is support for cores, there is monitoring, there is logging. So for basic serverless use cases, this is the way to go. So I want to show you now how you can change your applications to use uh, this new flavor. It's super simple. And I will show you the console with this new, how this new launch look and what you can expect from it. So let's get to the code and to the console. I want to start by showing you how simple it is to configure the HTTP APIs in your project. So here I have a simple SAM application and it has one function, basic function, and it has an event that triggers that function. This event is from the new HTTP API. So before, if you were using API Gateway, it will just say API, and now it says HTTP API. That's all you need to do. And then you can add the path and the method as you used to do. You deploy this, and when it's deployed, we can go to the AWS console and check how this looks. I want to show you how this looks in API Gateway, so I will open the API Gateway console. Now you can see that this already looks different than before, and here is our API, some HTTP test, that is the one that we are interested in, and this is how it looks, the new flavor of API Gateway. If you open a REST uh, flavor, you will see the traditional look and feel for the API Gateway, but if you open an HTTP, one, you will see this new one. In the top, you can see all the API details. You always have an API ID as before. HTTP is the protocol, and you can add a description when you are creating this API as well. Here you can see the stage name. If you don't put anything, it will create a default one by just uh, using it. And then you have the invoke URL. And if you open it, you can see that it uh, doesn't have any more the stage in the in the world. So if we do 
backslash hello, that's how it goes. So no more stage in there. So you need to add a stage if you want to have dev, broad or whatever is your stage. And in the side here, we can see the develop, deploy and monitor. So if we go to develop, we can see the roots. We only have one that is hello and get. And here you can start adding authorizers on configuring what is the integration. In this case, the integration is Lambda. So you can see it in here that it says Lambda, but you could have different types of integrations. And here you can see the information on that. In the authorization, you can add authorizers for each of the routes. And in this case, if you want to add an authorizer, you can add uh, the JWT Authorizers are the only ones supported for now, but this will change later on. Also, we have core support here, so you can define the cores as well, as we were doing with the API gateway. Then when we deploy in the deploy category, we have the stages. In this case, we only have one stage that is the one created by default. And here it sees how it's deployed and the status. And later on, we have the monitoring and here we see that uh, the metrics for it and they are enabled. You have to enable the metrics and the login for the API gateway as you were doing for um, the traditional REST endpoint. So this is how it looks. I would like to do a full video doing a configuration of a more complex API gateway in the future. So let me know if you will be interested in having that um, in your in your code and i think for now on i will start using this api gateway flavor in all my videos because i think it's a great uh lightweight and cheaper and is meant for uh, serverless workflows so that's something you might start seeing in the future from fubar videos the code will be available in github but as you saw it's a very simple change from the normal api this was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up and I see you tomorrow with another episode on Launch Mass. Remember to leave me your favorite launches in the description box so I can create content on those launches. Why not? This is an ongoing series until Christmas, so I will be creating the content as we go. So I see you tomorrow. Bye bye.